Lord, about your divine appointments, Lord, as we get into more of the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, um, with this uh, section here, the Feast of Dedication and beyond, we just ask that you open our minds and our hearts to your word, Lord, that uh, these feast days would just come alive in us. Lord, we praise you and thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Go ahead. Your so we're basically looking at just like the second of the names for Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. And of course, the first one was the Feast of Tabernacles. But not only is it called the Feast of Tabernacles, it's also called the Feast of Dedication. So let's take a look at what it says, um, or how come we call it the Feast of Dedication. So let's look at 1 Kings 8, 1 and 2, and I guess we'll start with, what, Mickey? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now Solomon assembled, assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel, to King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. Therefore all the men of Israel assembled with King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. Yeah, just kind of interesting. Ethanim, <coughs> this is one of two uh, months in the year that actually has a Hebrew name. The month of Abib, which we also call Nisan. Abib is barley, and that's mm -hmm. the month of Passover. Ethanim is the other Hebrew name that we see, and it means waters or running waters mm. all of incidentally all the common or commonly used names of the months actually come from the Babylonian era so they're they're borrowed from that time but this one predates that so we have the month of Abib and the month of Ethanim it's interesting it's the first and the seventh months that you see with the Hebrew names you will see some a couple of other names I don't remember which ones they are off the top of my head but they come from the Babylonian instead of the so, kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Just a little aside there. Yeah. Normally the Bible just refers to the months by number. One, two, three, four, so on. Okay, so Solomon's assembled the elders. They brought up the Ark of the Covenant. It's the, the, feast, in the, uh, the, the feast in the month of Athenim, which is the seventh month. Let's go on in 1 Kings 8. And let's skip to verses 65 and 66, shall we? Uh, my clicker won't work. Maybe there it is. There at that time Solomon held a feast, and all <coughs> Israel with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt before the Lord our God, seven days and seven more days, fourteen days. One more verse. One more slide. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king, and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the good that the Lord had done for his servant David, and for Israel his people. And then let's see what Second Chronicles says about this same event. So Second Chronicles 7, 8 through 10. Um, At that time Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with them, a very great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the birth of Egypt. And on the eighth day they held the sacred assembly, for they observed the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David for Solomon and his people Israel. So at what event did Solomon dedicate the temple and how long did this dedication actually last? Two weeks. It lasted two weeks, yes. They actually began it before the Feast of Tabernacles and extended through the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is the feast in the seventh month and they observed the dedication for seven days and the feast for seven days. A total of 14 days. So, why then would the Feast of Tabernacles also be called the Feast of Dedication, which is just a follow-up to what we read? Because at that time, Solomon dedicated the temple. Okay? It was held consecutively with the feast days. Now, seven days is the period of dedication or purification. 
And let's take a look at that in Exodus 29, 35 to 37. Your slides. Thus you shall do to Aaron and his sons, according to all that I have commanded you. Seven days you shall consecrate them, and you shall offer a bull every day as a sin offering for atonement. You shall cleanse the altar when you make atonement for it, and you shall anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and <coughs> sanctify it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whatever touches the altar must be holy. Okay, and then let's look a little bit farther in that chapter, verses 44 to 46. So I will consecrate the tabernacle of meeting at the altar. I will also consecrate both Aaron and his sons to minister to me as priests. I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. He's the Lord. <laughs> uh, I would think so. Yes. <laughs> Leviticus 8.33 also talks about that. Um, Linda? And you shall not go outside the door of the tabernacle of meeting for seven days until the days of your consecration are ended. For seven days he shall consecrate you. Okay, so how long was that ordination of Aaron and his sons? And how long did the purification of the altar last? Seven days. Each one was seven days, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. The altar was purified each day of the same seven day period that um, Aaron and uh, the altar were purified, or in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what event did the Israelites hold after that 14th day, the seven days of dedication of Solomon's temple and then seven days of the feast? So we're going back to um, Leviticus, Leviticus and then we're going to go back to Solomon's dedication ceremony in 2nd Chronicles. So first Leviticus 23, 34 to 36. We'll go with David here and we'll pick up Sean and Sharon. Speak to the children of Israel saying, the 15th day of the 7th month shall be the feast of the Lord and the feast of tabernacles for 7 days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and yet you shall do no customary work on it. Okay. And then let's look at Second Chronicles 7, 9 to see how that was observed. So, um, Sean? And on the eighth day they held a sacred assembly for they observed the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. Okay. So what happened on the day after? After the seven days they held a sacred, sacred assembly. assembly. Yeah. So they observed that eighth day assembly, the Shemini Atzeret. Mm -hmm. uh, that was commanded in Leviticus. So they followed the commandment for the Feast of Tabernacles with an eighth day assembly to follow. Well, that eighth day referred to that we just read here is the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's called Shemini Atzeret, or the assembly of the eighth day. And the number eight is the number of new beginnings. Okay, well, why? Because they is seven days, and what follows after seven? Eight, eight which is also number one, one. the first mm -hmm. day of the new week. Okay, so let's see now. Remember Aaron and his sons? It took them seven days for their uh, dedication, their purification. So let's see what they did immediately after that period of dedication. So Leviticus 9, this is a long one, one through seven. Um, How many slides? One. Four. Four slides, so do just one slide around, maybe? Yeah, well, there's four on the first let's part, do two and the and second two. part has two more, so We'll six just do slides. two slides for everybody. Mm -hmm. It came yeah. to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel, and he said to Aaron, Take for yourself a young bull as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering, without blemish, and offer them before the Lord. And to the children of Israel you shall speak, saying, 
take a kid of the goats as a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year, without blemish, as a burnt offering. Also, a bull and a ram as peace offerings to sacrifice before the Lord, and a grain offering mixed with oil. For today, the Lord will appear to you. And Mickey. So they brought, so they brought what Moses commanded before the tabernacle of meeting, and all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, This is a thing which the Lord commanded you to do, and the glory of the Lord will appear to you. Okay. One more, Mickey. And Moses said to Aaron, Go to the altar, offer your sin offering and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself and for the people. Offer the offering of the people and make atonement for them, as the Lord commanded. And then we're going to pick up with verses 22 through 24, Shirley. Then Aaron lifted his hand toward the people, blessed them, and came down from offering his sin offering, the burnt offering and peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of meeting and came out and blessed the people. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Amber alert, sorry. There you yeah, go. That's oh, what I was, was too. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And I've got oh. all the readers turned off. Yeah. <laughs> and fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Okay, so what? I guess that was it. That was it, yeah. yeah. So what did Aaron do right after he had his dedication, his purification? He went to work, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, he went to work. He began his duties as a priest. He offered his first offering before the Lord in his role as a priest. And he also blessed the people. Mm -hmm. So basically, Aaron began his ministry as a high priest. So I guess that answers our second question. Mm -hmm. How is this a new beginning? It's a sign of a covenant. The sign of a covenant. He entered into this relationship, this covenant relationship mm -hmm. with God, that um, he would be the, the high priest. Of course, the covenant is it's just not Aaron, but it's Aaron and his sons would be pri the priesthood. Down through the ages. Okay. And then in this last verse, what happened here? It's on the board. Fire fell. Fire fell. Mm -hmm. Consumed the offering. Okay. So the fire of God fell, and. The glory of the Lord entered the tabernacle of meeting. Okay? So, again, it's this really God came and dwelt with man. Ooh, okay. Now, he was there in the pillar of cloud. He was there in the fire. Okay? But he entered this new place that man had built for him. He entered into the tabernacle, which, of course, means dwelling place. So, he entered into that dwelling place. Question. Uh -huh. Are there any known descendants of Aaron? Uh, oh, tons of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, anybody with the last name of Cohen, Khan, Katz, Coon. Variation, um, Crone. Mm. Yeah, so Jonathan Khan, K A, you know, C H N. Oh, really? He's oh. he's um, mm. of the priesthood. Oh, yeah, good. he's of, of that lineage. Okay. Mm -hmm. In um, the Spanish, it became uh, Cortez. Oh, okay, Rico mm -hmm. Cortez is of the priestly oh, wow. line. Okay, so you know you've got the same thing going on. Cats, Cortez, Cohen. I mean, it just kind of morphed a little bit. Yeah. So oh. those are all of the priestly. There's also um, a Levi. Um, remember the old furniture store, Levitz? Yeah. It's yeah. another. It's yeah. another name. It's mm. That's for the Levites, though. Yeah. So not the. Not necessarily priesthood. priesthood but they are Levites. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. So not all the Levites were of the priesthood. Correct. Only the sons of Aaron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can kind of pick those out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Okay. So let's take a look now at another type of new beginning, circum circumcision. Mm -hmm. Genesis 17, 4 through 6. And then I've got a 10 with an arrow or a dash um, after it. I'm not it, goes, sure. it goes up to uh, verse 14. Okay, something happened to that? Something happened to it, so there's uh, three <laughs> slides on that one. Three slides? Okay, so where are we with that? Jeanette, no. I think. Oh, Somebody else's phone is going off. 
with an Amber Alert, I hear it. Yeah. Oh, mine. So, yeah. 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 I can turn okay. it down. Okay, though. there we go. Okay. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. Okay, and then 10 through 14. Um, <clears throat> this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Mm -hmm. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised, every male child in your generations. <clears throat> he who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendants. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Go ahead. Yeah, either, either one. Either one. Okay, and the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be mm -hmm. cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Okay, a lot of, lot of interesting things in there, but how is circumcision a type of new beginning? It's on the eighth day. It's on the eighth day. Mm -hmm. And how is the act giving rise to the idea that the eighth day is a new beginning? The new child is yes. brought into the covenant. Yes. Okay. So really, in a sense, it's almost a new birth. Mm -hmm. You know, physical birth when when he's born physically, and then you've got being brought into the covenant a new birth. Okay. Did anybody pick up on um, who was to be circumcised? Was it just the child that was born into the family? Oh, no, no. It was anybody that was, like, if you bought a child, yeah. I guess. Yeah, or born. Right. So even the, the servant or the slave who's purchased mm -hmm. is brought into the covenant. I just noticed that. Okay? You stop and think about that. You know, you bring somebody into the, your household, then you're obligated to bring them into the covenant. Wow. Mm -hmm. Was there an age restriction on that? Not that I know of. Yeah. Abraham was pretty old when he got circumcised. Also, also, I think it's in, in Joshua. Yeah. Where they circumcised all the the males, the males yeah. right. before the because they didn't, oh, they right, didn't yeah. do it while they were in the wilderness. Right, right, yeah. But after they crossed into the promised land, they all they, they, they were all circumcised, and then they went to battle. Oh, in terrible. Okay. It was a few days Almost later. Immediately. Oh, a few <laughs> days later, they had some oh, no. <laughs> recovered. Yes, Sean. This week's Torah portion talks about circumcision of the heart, which yeah. is kind of like a new beginning because when you think about it, circumcision of the heart has to deal with uh, setting aside our pride and arrogance and accepting Jesus and his you know, law, his Torah. So that's like a new beginning for each mm -hmm. one of us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You know, you're cutting off that part of your heart that is... That's prideful, prideful. selfish. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are cut off the stony heart yes. to, to reveal the flesh. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's continue with circumcision. So what day was Yeshua's circumcision? And let's look at Luke 2.21 and ask some follow-up questions with that. So Luke 2.21, um, give Linda a few minutes to finish writing. Okay. If you're writing, it's, you know, just, we'll pause for you. <laughs> okay. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Okay, so what day was this circumcision? They followed the, the commandment. Okay, so remember before we talked about the Feast of Tabernacles as having a lot of, there's eight, let me say that they had a lot of evidence, or we have a lot of evidence 
to indicate that Yeshua was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. One of them, of course, was the reason for celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles was that God dwelt with man. Mm -hmm. And the words when Yeshua was born is that God dwells among us. Okay? His name was Emmanuel, God with us. And of course, John 1.1 1, 1 says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So that was one piece. Now, let's look at the supposition. Suppose that Yeshua was <laughs> born on the first day of the That's Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> so if he was born on the first day of Tabernacles, what day was his circumcision? Shemini Atzeret, the mm -hmm. day of the eighth day assembly, mm -hmm. which is the new beginning. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay? Mm -hmm. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Never thought of that. Is that when he got his name? Is that what that's saying? Yes. Uh, they, you know, the, the angel said his name was to be called Jesus or Yeshua, okay, because he will save his people from their sins. But Yeshua the means salvation. Huh? Is that the official day? Maybe yes. Name? Yep. And the naming is always on the day of circumcision. What do they call them before? They you know what they do. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my, my grandma was three point. years old. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Three, three years old. So you were saying you were called her baby. And the baby was called mm -hmm. Buddy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So. so Catholic, that's what they do. Yeah. Okay. They have to go to church and they were born in the prairies. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yes, the naming happens on the circumcision. Okay. So we see again seven days of purification, followed by an eighth day of new beginnings and the purification of the second temple in 167 BC, after it was defiled by Antiochus IV Epiphanes and liberated by Judas, Judah Maccabeus. The purification of that time lasted seven days, and on the eighth day sacrifices were offered, and this became the holiday, the festival of Hanukkah, which means dedication. Hanukkah is also known as the festival of lights because of the miracle of the oil for the temple menorah lasting for eight days, even though they only had enough oil for one. And finally, this festival of Hanukkah, when they did the rededication, it was looked at as a reprise of the Feast of Tabernacles because they had been unable to celebrate it at the time required. So the commandment was, or the decision was to deliberately observe Hanukkah as the Feast of Tabernacles. So those two are connected. Yeah. yeah. So in uh, the Gospel of John, it says Yeshua was in the temple, and it was a feast of dedication, mm -hmm. and it was winter. That word dedication mm -hmm. is, in Hebrew, would be Hanukkah. That's what the word means. So he observed Hanukkah as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we pick it up with celebration of water pouring, part H. We've talked a little bit about that already, but we're going to kind of dig into it. So the celebration of water pouring, of course, came out of the commandment to rejoice during the Feast of Tabernacles and Isaiah's prophecy about drawing water from the wells of salvation. Drawing water from the wells of Yeshua. Yes. So the ceremony of water pouring, the high priest takes water from the pool of Siloam, uh, which we learned meant sent out. Remember that? Uh, the source of the water in the pool was the spring of Gion. Gion is also the name of one of the rivers that flowed out of Eden, remember in Genesis, and it is um, certainly a river of living water. Mm -hmm. So um, we have there the definition of Dion means to gush forth, to break forth, to labor, or bring forth, come forth, draw out, take out. Mm -hmm. so, how many have been to uh, Jerusalem down to the pool of Siloam? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it's still there. You can visit it. It's kind of stagnant now, but it's still there. Is that the particular one that the angel would disturb? And then no, that was in the that was on the north side. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was a pool of Bethesda, of the, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And, all, and just, just as a little aside, that all the gates entering the temple were pools and mikvahs everywhere. Yeah, it's going to be like that draw up. So you're going to draw up the waters from the sent one. And of course we have draw up the waters of salvation. Draw up from the well of salvation. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, were these wells also just for the people? They weren't for the animals, right? This one I believe was just for the people, but I mm -hmm. do not know for certain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they drew water from it to water the animals, but the animals weren't there. Okay, Yeshua heals a blind man on the eighth day, or Shimon Yatsaret. Anybody want to ask him? Yes. Everybody's making notes. <laughs> so, um, let's look at John uh, 9, 1 through 7, and we'll answer a couple of questions. Who is next reader? Where are we at? I just read. Okay, so go to, we'll go to Sharon. And oh, okay. Then we'll okay, we'll yeah. go. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. <clears throat> I must work the works of him who sent me on the this day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Keep going. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Hmm. Hmm. So, um, what does Yeshua call himself in this passage? Um, Oh, the light of the world. The light of the world, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. where do you see that? And where does he send the blind mm -hmm. man to wash? In the light of the world. In that pool of yeah. Siloam, mm -hmm. that's just the water the where they draw the waters for the ceremony mm -hmm. of water pouring, which is symbolic of the wells or the waters of salvation. Living mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. The living water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, he calls himself, of course, the light of the world. So, so um, let's see, the Torah was written, was the written word of God. It's compared to uh, flowing water. As waters flow from high ground to low, so the Torah flows from heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. Yes? So do you have any insight as to the saliva with the mud? Is why you use the saliva in yeah. the mud? You all turned the clay into yeah. the mud, turned it into mud or clay. Well, I don't know. It, that's it, water too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it it brings to mind, you know, God getting in the dirt using both hands to create Adam. Right. So you know, Yeshua is using the dirt to put on the eyes to heal. I'm not sure, you know, in terms of the saliva. Water. Yeah. Yeah. He's the living water. water. Yeah. He's the living water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Well, it, it's holy water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's holy. It's holy. It's holy. It's holy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, gotta, gotta make the mud stick on his eyes somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just spat on his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the celebration of water pouring thus celebrates Yeshua's birth. He burst forth from heaven, living water, sent out to bring life. You see those connections there? Mm -hmm. yeah. The name of so, the spring burst forth, Gion, mm -hmm. living water. And then the word Torah is uh, number 8451, and it's from a primitive root, number 3384 which is Yara, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's not written here, but it's Yara. And it means to flow as water. Mm -hmm. So the Torah mm -hmm. is based on that primitive root, to flow as mm -hmm. water. So that's why they compare it to rain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the celebration of water pouring is also an acknowledgement that God is the God of rain. 
during times of the kings of Israel and Judah, Baal worship infiltrated the worship of the Israelites. By turning to God and praying to him for rain during the Feast of Tabernacles, the Jewish people uh, then are repudiating any connection with Baal. So let's look at some scriptures here. Number or uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 2. We'll start there. Sean. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as rain drops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. So that's Torah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we go to Ezekiel 34, 26. I will make them in the places all around my hill a blessing, and I will cause showers to come down in their season, and shall be blessings of showers. Mm -hmm. And Psalm 72, 6 through 8. Back, Back up to Mickey. Mickey. He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. In his days the righteous shall flourish, an abundance of peace, until the moon is no more. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. So in these passages here, what is connected with rainfall? What do we see there? Blessings. Blessings. Well, mm -hmm. teaching. Teachings. Teachings. Okay. And in this passage in Psalm <coughs> 72, who is he? Yeshua. Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Yeshua, the coming of the Messiah, the living word, is described as coming like rainfall. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they mowed the grass back then. By <laughs> 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 oh, oh, hand. Yeah. <laughs> With a sickle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they didn't have a Torah. <laughs> 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 a Torah, a Torah. A Torah, a Torah. Okay, Haggai writes, we'll go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Before Sharon falls out of her chair. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah. So Haggai writes of a time when God withheld rain, sending a drought in its place, mm -hmm. and then restoring the rain. So what was the situation at that time? We'll go over to Haggai and look at uh, Haggai 1, verses <coughs> 3 through 11. How many slides we have? Four mm -hmm. slides. So let's do two again. Two each. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses, and his temple to lie in ruins? Mm -hmm. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider, consider your ways. Mm -hmm. You have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And we go on. Yeah. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little, and when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Mm -hmm. Therefore the heavens above you will hold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land, and the mountains, and the green, and the new wine, and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth on men, and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. So what is rainfall connected with here in this passage? What was the situation mm -hmm. at this time? There were more focused on themselves yeah. rather than what mm -hmm. God had asked them to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the, the first part of the passage up there, where does it say, um, you've sown much and you bring little, you eat, but you don't have enough. I'm just reminded of, of greed. Mm -hmm. You know, you, uh, many times you, you, you've seen people that are, you know, they, they workaholics and, they, and they, they're rich and they've got houses but their life is miserable and they fall apart you know 
uh, those kinds of things. You just they, they consume but can't get enough because they're not really satisfying that need, that real need. They can never have too much money or right. enough money. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that yeah. the same problem? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the focus mm -hmm. is on materialism, you know, how much do I have compared to what you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like God's house was in ruins too. They mm -hmm. hadn't rebuilt the temple. So mm -hmm. they hadn't rebuilt the temple, but they've got their own houses rebuilt mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. the people the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, showers are connected. Well, I guess I already read that. With um, right? So God withheld the rain when the Israelites delayed rebuilding the temple, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the people were rebuilding, of course, their own houses. So they're paying attention to themselves before they paid attention to to God. So the rainy season in Israel begins right after the Feast of Tabernacles and continues until early spring. Uh, by the time of Passover, the rainy season is mostly past, with only light spring showers and morning dew. Uh, so the Bible refers to these two parts of the rainy season as the latter and former rains. Uh, the latter and former rain come, respectively, in the spring and fall. So the former rain is in the fall because it is at the beginning of the rainy season. Now here in Washington, we have um, uh, kind of rains from October to October, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's saying it rains, it rains yes. all the time. Yeah. No, no somebody, somebody told me once, or posed a question, how do you tell the difference between summer and winter in the Northwest? Mm -hmm. The rain's warmer in the summer. <laughs> so, so. But anyway, I digress. So, um, the rain year goes yeah, from so October the, to October. Yeah. So October to March is what determines the amount of water that's in our watersheds up there, the amount of snowfall. So we can then predict how much water will be available during the dry summer months. Do, do you want to do that verse here first before we go yeah. too far? Joel yeah. 2.23. Oh, yeah. I guess I did miss one. Let's go to Joel uh, 2.23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Do you see how it tells you when the latter rain is? Mm -hmm. The latter rain is in the first month. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first month is the month of Nisan or Abib in the spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the fall rains are the heavy rains that come early in the rain year, early in the season. So these are the former rains. The late spring rains are those uh, lighter rains, and uh, those are the latter rains. Mm -hmm. I've got to get them straight. I, have I know, yeah, because it's backwards. Mm -hmm. OK, so, so the first month is, is this one, right? No, this is the seventh <laughs> month. <laughs> this is oh. month number seven. <laughs> Welcome to the biblical calendar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the spring is the first month? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want an explanation for that or? No. no. Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's confusing basically, even for those us that have been around in a while. Yeah, basically, God renumbered the months, but he didn't say to change when the year number changed. So the year number changes now. Okay, it used to be the first month because it goes from creation. But when God brought the children of Israel out of um, Egypt, He said, "Now renumber the months." Mm -hmm. So oh. Nisan is now month one, and so the new year falls as month seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can think of it this way. You know, um, our new year falls in the fourth month of the school year. You see okay. how that. Kind of same kind of an idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we see that Yeshua already came as the latter rain, right? Um, he was crucified in the spring at Passover. So both of these passages, the latter rain is mentioned as uh, coming first. And let's look at Hosea six so, three, which is yeah, over there. Let's go to look at that one. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. He's going forth to establish 
as the morning, he will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Mm -hmm. So the latter one comes first. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, no. you know, this, this also alludes to coming twice. Yes, I was just yes. thinking that. Yeah. But it also references the renumbering. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It renumbers. So the month that was number one, which would be the former rain, became then month seven. Mm -hmm. So you can see the renumbering and switching mm -hmm. the order. <clears throat> so they renumbered the rainfall because we renumbered the months. Mm -hmm. Which month is seven? Uh, the month we're coming into. It's Tishri? the month of Tishri. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So the celebration of water pouring, in this celebration, we see that Yeshua is uh, the source of the living water and his coming is compared to the rainfall that nourishes the earth. So, okay. You can see that. So there's a whole mm -hmm. personal application section, which we don't go through in class, but you can go through that on your own if you haven't already. And there's just some, some more stuff. It's a real nice at. one. It's on Psalm 1, which mm -hmm. is the tree planted by the water. Mm -hmm. So if you have time to go through that, Psalm 1 is a beautiful mm -hmm. psalm with that. Sorry, you don't get extra credit, but maybe a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> you get extra something. You get extra connection. Mm -hmm. with extra God. holiness. Extra, yes. extra holiness. I don't know if it's extra holiness. <laughs> extra time with God. Extra, which is really extra blessings from God. Best kind. That's true. Okay, so the Festival of Light is the next name. So we had the Festival of Tabernacles. We had the Feast of Dedication, we looked at the Ceremony of Water Pouring, and now we're going to look at the Festival of Light. So during the Feast of Tabernacles, the temple was lit by the four 75-foot tall torches. Mm. Jerusalem was visible for miles around. It was called the light of the world. The discarded linen garments of the priests were torn into strips, and that's what they used for wicks. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at John 1 four through nine and see what he says about Yeshua. Two slides. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I think Wayne, I think you're up. Okay. In him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent forth uh, from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might be believed. He was not that light, but was sent uh, to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. So how does the prophet John associate Yeshua's coming into the world as a light? Or I shouldn't say the prophet, the apostle John. He was a prophet too. But the Apostle John, how does he associate Yeshua's coming into the world as a light? What does he do? I mean, this is, John, there's, there's two Johns here. John is the Apostle that wrote the book, but he's talking about John the Baptist, mm -hmm. who is not the light. Right. Okay. What do we know about what is the light? He witnessed the light. Okay. Yeshua. Yeah. Yeshua was the true light. Okay. And earlier we saw that Yeshua is described as life, mm -hmm. and that light, or that life, mm -hmm. was the light mm -hmm. of man. Mm -hmm. Okay? And John the Baptist bore witness that Yeshua is the one who brings light to every man. <clears throat> is that like so go back a slide here. There we go. Uh, this man came for witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Okay, and at the very beginning in verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay? If you want a laser pointer, this one. Yeah, there. I should grab that. So, so G, uh, John bore witness to the light because the Lord spoke to him. Yes. Yeah, so John the Baptist came and said, I'm not the light, but I'm bearing witness to the light. Okay? Mm -hmm. So John described Yeshua as life, and that life was the light of men, and 
and John the Baptist bore witness that Yeshua brings light to every man. Too many Johns in that <laughs> passage there. So Isaiah chapter 9 is about Yeshua's birth. We're familiar with verses 6 and 7, but the rest of the passage tends to get ignored or skipped over. So let's read that, Isaiah 9, starting in verse 1 and going through verse 7, and pay attention to the language of the Feast of Tabernacles here, because we've learned a little bit now about the language of the Feast. Let's look at that. It's five slides. So we are at, um, Linda, you want to read two there, and then we'll have um, Sharon read three. Same mm -hmm. two slides. Yeah. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who was distressed, as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has sh shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of the har of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Sure. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments for holding blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So let's break mm -hmm. that down. Let's go back and look at verse mm -hmm. 2. Okay. So I, th I think mm -hmm. reading the first five verses in addition to the other two that we're familiar with, add this extra depth to it that you just don't normally see. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. explore that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, just kind of playing with prophetic ideas also in my head. <laughs> but <laughs> She's distracted. <No. laughs> what can I say? So what do we see in verse 2? We've got the light. The light that shines in the darkness. Okay? Verse. Just I can say one quick thing. It makes uh -huh. me think of the, the blind man. You know, I don't know how much a blind person, if they're completely blind, can see darkness or light. And so, you know, yeah. we associate with that with the water, but he was, you know, truly from darkness to light. If you can't see, oh, yeah. all of a sudden you can see. So, right. So, healing the blind man there, you know, and having him wash in the pool of Siloam, you know, you have the living water, but you also have the light. The light. He's the light of the world. Yes. He's what he taught. And that's you can point. see him. So all of a sudden, this man who was born blind, was in darkness yes. all of his life, is now in light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. You can use it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so verse 2, we see that uh, those who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Mm -hmm. That definitely reminds us of the healing of the blind man. So you have light in the darkness. Uh, verse 3. Joy. You, Joy. Mm -hmm. They rejoice in what kind of joy in verse 3? Oh, the joy of the oh, harvest. Oh, joy, of harvest. joy of the harvest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now in verse 4, we have to kind of remember what we've learned about um, Yom Kippur a little bit. I was, so, I mean, I was just thinking that, you know, uh, David went last year and, and enjoyed the harvest. The harvest. <laughs> participated in ha with Hayavel in harvesting yeah. grapes cool. and other crops there in Israel. Uh -huh. So there is a joy to yes. harvesting. Oh, yeah. okay, verse okay. 4. So verse 4, we have to think back to Yom Kippur and the day that the Jubilee is announced. 
You've broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor. So the day of Jubilee has come. Okay? It's come and passed. In verse 5, garments rolled in blood are being used for burning. What was the lights, mm -hmm. the, the torches in the, the Feast of Tabernacles? Garments. The priest's garments. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't know if they were rolled in blood, but I'm sure they had a lot of blood on them mm -hmm. from all the sacrifices. Okay, let's continue. In verse 6, this child is born. What was his name again? You shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel for God, God with us. Mm -hmm. is with us. Okay, and in verse six and seven. Six. Six. Seven. Okay, let's seven. do six first. We'll do six. Uh, the government is upon his shoulder. When is the coronation of the king? Mm -hmm. At tomorrow. the feast of trumpets tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow night. So the government is on his shoulder now, and mm -hmm. his name is wonderful counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, wow. Prince of Peace. And how long does this government last in verse 7? One more in verse 7. Be no end of this kingdom. Okay. And how does he judge it? With justice, judgment, righteousness. And the Lord of hosts is the one who's going to establish that. So we looked at part of it. You know, we, we've, we've known about part of this passage for many, many years. It talks about his birth. Mm -hmm. But he didn't accomplish all of that yet. The rest of it's yet to come. Okay. Let's go to some more about his birth. Okay, can you tell we're kind of looking at evidence that he was born at the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's another little piece of evidence. Could we back up one? I, I uh -huh. have a question. Yeah. Now he's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He's all referring to Yeshua. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he was God incarnate. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is one yeah. of the the um, verses that's translated a little bit different in the Hebrew Bible, and I'd have to look at it again to see how it's translated. But they have the grammar a little bit different, the sentence structure a little different there. He's so. father and son. Pardon? He's father and son. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so let's go back then and take a look at Yeshua's birth. And someone was there in the temple at Yeshua's dedication. Luke 2, 28 through 32. Let's look at that one. I don't remember where we are now. Is it Linda? I don't you just read? David just He's read. David just read? No. No? I think Sharon just uh, read. Maybe. Sharon oh. did. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we're back to Sean. <laughs> he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, mm -hmm. which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So he took him up. He is Simeon in the temple, and the hymn he took up in his arms was the infant Yeshua. And these are the words of Simeon over Yeshua. So, you know, keep those in mind, and then we're going to compare to Psalm 118.25. And David? Psalm 118.25. Yeah. Save now, I pray, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, I pray, mm -hmm. send now prosperity. Mm -hmm. So let's go back then and look at that passage in Luke. And how do the words of Simeon refer to the Feast of Tabernacles? My eyes have seen your salvation. Yeah, my eyes have seen your salvation. The cry at the Feast of Tabernacles is, Lord, send your salvation now. And Simeon's response is, my eyes have seen your salvation. Okay? Mm. And then what else does he say? Verse 32. He's a light, light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. Okay. And of course, the ceremony of water pouring, uh, that Psalm 118, verse 25, is that song that is sung in the, song, the um, 
Sorry, I'm talking about water about. pouring. Okay. Now, you're not seeing it here. We haven't connected it yet, but we're going to connect in a little while the Feast of Tabernacles with the Feast of Nations, the Feast for the Gentiles. So here in this Luke passage, he's a light to who? The Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that is part of the role or part of what was going on at the Feast of Tabernacles as we dig back into that a little bit more. Okay, so let's look at a little bit more about Yeshua at the Feast of Tabernacles. So let's look at John 3. We know John 3, 16, but let's look at John 3, 19. And we're back to Mickey. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And Isaiah 42, 6 and 7. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's, let's talk about each one of these. So John 3.19, how does that identify Yeshua as the light of the world? Yeah, the light has come into the world. Here's the light, and it's come into not just one place, but into the world. I just keep thinking of Genesis, you know, let there be light. Yes. And then chose Which is, and I think, yeah. I know that that is a very literal thing. Uh -huh. And when we are born again, he literally pulls us from that darkness, that kingdom of darkness, which is real. Yeah. And brings us into the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's ever experienced that darkness knows that is there that is a real kingdom. That's Hasatan's mm -hmm. kingdom and mm -hmm. real. We don't want to you don't want to mess spend around eternity with it. there. No. <laughs> Much less any one day here. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. I like that. And then the Isaiah forty two, six and seven, we saw the phrase already in Luke two in Simeon's words. And what are those words there? Light He's a light to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And of course, we already saw that he opened up some blind eyes mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, Isaiah 49, 6. And we're at Shirley. Indeed, he says, It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Okay, what do we see there? Light to the Gentiles again. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not said just once here. And of course, you should be my Yeshua, my salvation. Okay, and then let's look at a New Testament verse and see what Paul says in Acts 26. Mm -hmm. 22 to 23. Yes, not just on the end of that verse. Uh -huh. That you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Isn't that what Yeshua says just before he leaves there? Oh, when yeah. Like when he said to his apostles. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. I think it's in the end of Matthew. I will be with you even to the end, end of the earth. earth. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Connection believe that's at the end of me. Matthew. You're small kinds of stuff today. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be the hollow I made. <laughs> I had your weedies this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is hollow over there from last night that we uh, yeah. baked. So. <coughs> okay, so Acts 26, 22, and 23. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand, witnessing both the small and great say no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jews people, or to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. So what does Paul say that he's going to do, that he is? Light. Light. Yeah, to both Jew and Gentiles. So I think we've got a lot of places that identify Yeshua as the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, uh, you know, and a big part of that connection is that passage in Luke and Simeon's words over the, the baby Yeshua that mm -hmm. he's the light to the Gentiles, which takes us to those um, prophecies in Isaiah. Do you have any idea what Simeon means? Simeon is, uh, yeah, it's hearing. Hearing? Yeah, hearing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, the name of Joseph's brother, Simeon. He was the one that was taken as surety oh, for his yeah. other brothers, and his name was hearing. Their hearing was taken. Mm -hmm. So yeah. their hearing was removed mm -hmm. until they brought back Benjamin. Benjamin. Right, right, right. Yeah. Who is yeah. the son of my right arm, mm -hmm. who represents those who never doubted in Joseph. Yeah, the type of Yeshua. Wow. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to be very interesting. You know, we had, an, you know, an opportunity um, when we were in Israel to share our faith with, you know, a, a man of uh, Jewish man of faith in God, but doesn't know Yeshua. And you know, he listened very intently to our words mm -hmm. and accepted who we are. And accepted our love for the Jewish people. Mm. So you know, you you gotta say this. It's not far coming. Mm. It's not far and coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Yeshua teaches about himself. Mm. It's not only mm. others who witness about him. What does he say about himself? And this time that we're looking at here, these passages are what he says during the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them, saying, he spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Okay, and he's talking about this during this time, during the Feast of Tabernacles. It might have actually been that eighth day. Mm -hmm. You think, you know, there were so many people there. Yeah. And he didn't just like say, oh, I'm going to do that. I mean, he must have stood up and just doubled He said it many times. Out. He yes. didn't to a lot of yeah. people. Well, this is um, at the time of the healing of the blind man. So I think probably a lot of people were looking at him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, they saw it. They witnessed it. And he declared it. Yeah. And then John 9, 3 through 5. Jesus answered, neither... This man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay, and this is in response to the people asking him, Jesus, who was it who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it his parents? Okay. Or the man himself who was born blind? And Jesus' mm -hmm. words were, this man didn't mm -hmm. sin, neither does his parents. Mm -hmm. He was born blind so that the works mm -hmm. of God should be revealed in him. And we've just talked about the revealing of the works of God in him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Healed by the living water. Mm -hmm. The I am. Brought I from am. darkness into light. Yeah. Okay, so what does Yeshua teach about himself during this Feast of Tabernacles? <laughs> he says pretty blatantly, let's go back, honey. I am the I'm the light. Yeah, go back. You, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah the go. The I'm the light of the world. Okay, he didn't say it once. <laughs> he said it many times. I am the light of the world. Okay. Uh, and then let's go on. That's not the only time. Let's jump forward to John 12, which is right before his final Passover, right in the days leading up to his crucifixion. And now let's look at John 12, 35 and 36. Where are we at this point? Okay. All right. Um, then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke mm -hmm. and departed and was hidden from them. Mm -hmm. Than that. And then let's skip uh, a little bit farther down the chapter in verse 46. <clears throat> I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Hmm. Tons of times. Okay? And then let's go back. This takes us back to Matthew 5. Okay? And this is not, this is Yeshua speaking to his followers. Verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. 
nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how does this light of the world apply to us as believers? Kind of dual things. Those who believe in the light will not abide in darkness. Okay? Sons of light. We will be sons of light. And because we are sons of light, we will be a light to the world. And we're yeah, and that gives definitely the whole purpose is to give glory to the Father. So it all connects. The sages write that the illumination of the temple represented the Shekinah glory of God. Mm -hmm. When the glory of God returns to the temple and Yeshua takes up residence, Jerusalem will be a light to the world. Mm -hmm. And what will the light do? You know, it's kind of interesting. We don't have record of the Shekinah glory ever entering into that second temple. Mm -hmm. So it's like they recreated it on their own <coughs> by mm -hmm. the torches and stuff to represent the Shekinah glory. Yeah. I think I mentioned last week that the, the temple at the time of Tabernacles was so brightly lit, you could see it well out mm -hmm. to sea, yes. the globe, well out mm -hmm. to the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. you know, because Jerusalem is high up on the hills, you can see it more, more than 200 miles out to sea. Okay. That's why it was kind of known as the light to the world. It was, a, it was a guiding light, what the lighthouse would be for navigation. Okay, so let's see how Jerusalem will be a light to the world and what it will do. So Isaiah 61 through 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Okay, you and your here is referring to Jerusalem. Mm. It's a prophecy over the city. Okay. Mm. Um, Isaiah 62, 1 through 3. Back up to Miki. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the mm -hmm. Lord will name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Mm -hmm. That's the city of Jerusalem. Mm. Wow. Mm. Let's move up to see what Revelation 21, 23 to 25 says about the city. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated <coughs> it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there. So what will that light in Jerusalem do? First, it will draw all the nations to it. Okay? Drawing all men from all nations to it. They see the righteousness that is coming from Jerusalem. And they will come to the light. That's the messianic reign. Yeah. It's just interesting in the very first verses, there's a lot of um, words that <clears throat> kind of reminded me of the sunrise. You know, yeah. He's arisen, but he's also risen from the dead. Uh -huh. So all of these words, like in the, there's darkness to the world, and then you think of the uh -huh. and then the sun rises, and then there's no need for the sun. So it's just this whole yeah. sunrise picture that I'm seeing. Yeah. And, so, and so let's tie it to Judah's mm -hmm. two twin sons, Peretz and Zerah. I think is how you pronounce it. I can go back and well, look at exactly that. But yeah, Peretz means to break out, to break forth. Okay. And in the, the birth of these two sons, first the second son, Zerah, sticks his arm out and pulls it back. Okay. And then instead we have Peretz bring, being born forth. He's the one who breaks out. Okay. 
okay? Who breaks out of the womb? Who breaks out into life that we know? Yeshua is the first one who breaks out into eternal life, you know, the resurrection of the dead for us. And then Zerah means sun rising. <laughs> so the sun shall rise over you. You know, he is the sunrise. He's the rising of the sun. Isn't that verse about we feel a little bit more? Yeah. It's like the calf. Yeah. That's in uh, Micah, I believe. So I just thought I'd tie that in. You know, just a little extra piece there. So we're talking about the sun shall rise. It's all connected. That's It's all there. You can't go anywhere in scriptures without it confirming itself. So is this the millennium? Is the millennium is the for would be the Isaiah passages. This one's talking about the heavenly Jerusalem that comes down. Okay. okay. And the millennium will have a sun and a moon. Yes. This actually will have a sun and the moon too. It just says you're not going to need it. <laughs> it doesn't say there isn't a sun and a moon. It says there's no need for it because the glory of God illuminates it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't say it's been done away with. But it says uh, there'll be no night there. Yeah, because the the glory of God illuminates it forever. So you, you live in Jerusalem, you can't go to sleep at night because it's too. Well, much. you know, if you live in Fairbanks, Alaska, <laughs> in the summertime, oh, okay. there's not much darkness up there. And <laughs> well, it's no different than in the Exodus. In yeah. the what? The Exodus it was the glory of the God. pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there was really no darkness over the camp yeah. because of the pillar of fire illuminating it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we move on to the season of our joy, another name for this feast. And the celebration of water pouring along with the 75 foot tall towers were part of the way that the Jewish people rejoiced before the Lord. So that's commanded, of course, in Leviticus. The whole feast was one gigantic big party, big celebration. So how does the announcement of Yeshua's birth use the beginning or use the language of the Feast of Tabernacles? Let's turn to Luke. Mm -hmm. Luke, I think, has an answer for that one. Uh, mm -hmm. Luke 8 through uh, 2, 8 through 14. There's two slides here. Who's next reader? I don't remember where we were. Where were we? Who read that? Shirley. Is it Shirley's, mm -hmm. Shirley's Shirley. turn? Yeah, Mickey just read. Okay. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly who was praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So you see that this is a time of great joy to all nations. Mm -hmm. So he was born in what? A manger, or is what it says, a temporary dwelling. It wouldn't be a place you would normally live. So it's a temporary dwelling. Whether it's a permanent barn or something like that, it's still a temporary dwelling for him. The word manger mm -hmm. is the Greek word it means a crib that is a place to have food or stir food and a manger. Okay. So. Bread of life. Yeah. Bread of life. Bread of life. Food. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but he's wrapped in spotlight clothes, which were the strips of blood. Yes. For the priests. Mm -hmm. Could very well have been. Strips of priesthood because Mary's cousin was Elizabeth, yeah, was and say, Elizabeth up, was married up, to uh, who? Sw the word swaddling in there. Let's see what it, what it says. It just says strips. Yeah, it says strips of linen. Yeah. So like we also see clothes. the strips of linen that were used for the priestly garments mm -hmm. that were uh, discarded and used for mm -hmm. uh, the, the wicks and the 
in the lampstands. Mm -hmm. um, Mary's cousin Elizabeth um, right. lived there in Bethlehem. And oh, didn't Bethlehem live in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. No, in no. the city of Judea. But we don't know what one it know was. Which city. Yeah. But it couldn't have been far from Jerusalem. No. Because he was, uh, he was a priest. My husband right. was a priest. Okay. Subserved in the temple. And you would have those priestly garments. So when mm -hmm. they're soiled, they'd be cut up in strips. Mm -hmm. So he may have had some around his house. Right. So and you know, this anywhere. manger, this place of food, of keeping the food, it did not have to be in a barn or a stall. It could have been in a sukkah, and it was the place where they stored food in the mm -hmm. sukkah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people say those swaddling cloths are burial cloths. Like they say, these pointed out. A lot of, a lot, you know, it was, it was the common practice to wrap infants in the swaddling clothes and, you know, like we said, the, the priestly garments, you know, one of the things they used them for there was the, for the um, wicks and the torches, but they also used them, the um, priesthood, the wives would use them to wrap their infants in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So David submitted his first psalm of praise, and that's recorded in uh, First Chronicles 16, which we're going to read here in a moment. So in honor of the Ark of the Covenant being brought into Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So this foreshadows Yeshua coming back to reign. Mm -hmm. David has just defeated the Philistines who have come up against God's people, and the presence of God is coming into Jerusalem with victory. So we can see Yeshua coming into Jerusalem with triumph after winning the victory over the nations that will come up against Jerusalem in the mm -hmm. final days. You see a parallel there. Mm -hmm. So um, the psalm is uh, full of praises to God mm -hmm. and resounds with exuberant joy. So let's go over and read 1 Chronicles 16, uh, 27 through 34. There's three slides. Who is next? I think it was me. Yeah. Okay. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, or families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. And let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field rejoice and all that is in it. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Mm -hmm. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Yeah. So there's a psalm that's not written in Psalms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. It's in the Chronicles. So how is this psalm a prophecy about the coming of Yeshua, and how does it speak of the fall feasts? I think you can see how it's much more than just a victory cry over the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't say you know we we won victory over the Philistines. You know, it says much more than that. Mm -hmm. So what do you see there? Is bring an offering, come before him. Mm -hmm. He's coming to judge. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's coming to judge. Go to the next slide mm -hmm. there also. Victory over the nations. Come before him who? Mm -hmm. All, All the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 31, let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Okay, that's a time of rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And who reigns? Mm -hmm. Remember the yes. Feast of Trumpets is all about mm -hmm. having God on his throne. It's the coronation of the King and Yeshua. Okay? Mm -hmm. The sea is roaring. The fields are rejoicing. Everything that's in it is rejoicing. Is it a time of great joy? Mm -hmm. It is. The trees are rejoicing. And why? As Sharon said, Mm -hmm. He's coming to judge the earth. And what yeah. is the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement? It's judgment day. Judgment day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I re see the, the trees of the wood shall rejoice. And then they got those big palm branches mm -hmm. that they're waving and, and stuff. So yeah, everything's involved. 
Okay. Do we have time for one more? What's that? We have time for one more verse? Yeah, yeah we have almost 10 minutes. We're so good. Okay. So when the Jews celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles for the first time after the Babylonian exile, they mm -hmm. celebrated like never before. Uh, let's look at, before we go on further. Um, Gee, if you were at Shabbat today, guess who read those verses today? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Mark. <laughs> these, these verses. Nehemiah 8. Nehemiah 8, 8 14 mm -hmm. through 17. Mm -hmm. There's two slides. 14 and 17. Hmm? 14 and 17. 14 and 17. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month. So the whole assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua the son of Nun, until the day that the children of Israel had not done so, and there was very great gladness. Wow, do you catch that? Mm -hmm. They were commanded to build Sukkah, and from the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until that time, Israel didn't do it? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. They had all of this. Mm -hmm. you'd, you'd think they'd learn out there in the wilderness, mm -hmm. and they come in the land, and they immediately hurt that off. Put it all on. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, right the the sages here. say. Yeah, the sages say that uh, the celebrations were more joyful and exuberant than ever before. Imagine that uh, that even greater joy of the celebration when we celebrate that feast of tabernacles when Yeshua comes again. What's that going to be like? Mm -hmm. Psalm 98 describes that day. So we're going to look at that psalm in detail. We should just piece about by piece finish by it. Piece. What's that? We should just about finish it up. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, while we're reading that, let's think about what the elements of the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement are spoken of as having been accomplished. Okay. So the first part of the so psalm. So first part of the psalm is uh, verses 1 through 3. There's two slides. Will sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. And so, what are the elements of the Feast of Trumpets and Day of Atonement that have been accomplished so far? We see, we see a victory. 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 His righteousness is revealed to the nations and to Israel. They remember Mercy. when the nations will see him when he comes on Yom Kippur. He comes with the clouds and great glory on that day. Mm -hmm. So the nations have seen him. And Pastor Mark was talking about that shofar and what the shofar does. So in verse 3, he has remembered. That's right. Okay? It's remembrance. You blow the shofar to call on God to remember his people and his people to remember God. Pastor Mark was talking about that today. Okay. So let's look at the next three verses. There's one slide here. Next reader. Here we go. Um, I think Linda, when she gets a minute here, you gotta write these things down, otherwise we forget, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one right here? Yeah. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song, rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of a song, with trumpets and the sound of a horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are the elements of the Feast of Trumpets? Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles follow. When do we see that? What's that second word? Joyfully! Joyfully. <laughs> Break into song. 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 Rejoice. Rejoice. Sing. 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 All yes. The yeah, the, the trumpet is an element of the Feast of Trumpets. You do blow that. That is that shout, that teruah. 
but it continues, you know, the shofars continue to blow, and when you, by the time you get to tabernacles, it's an incredible time, mm -hmm. a time of joy. Yeah, the shout at the, at the Feast of Trumpets actually has an element of solemnity about it. And part of that solemnity is because you're calling on the people to remember God. You're calling on them to repent. You've got those 10 days of awe to make things right. Mm -hmm. The books are open in heaven. The trumpet alarm, you know, <clears throat> sounds to remind you that the books are open. Is your name written in that book? Mm -hmm. So those 10 days between the Feast of Trumpets and, mm -hmm. the, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, are actually more solemn. Mm -hmm. There is joyfulness because the, you have the coronation of the king, because the doors of heaven are open, but you also have that solemnity because the Day of Judgment is coming. It's 10 days away. Mm -hmm. Which feast mm -hmm. represents the rapture of the church? Feast of Trumpets. The sound that awakens the dead. Yeah. And then you come back here. This is the wedding feast. Or the, you know, you have the wedding, but then the, the feast is 15 days later. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go on and look at verses 7 and 8. Now, you will see that the word judge is the same here, is the same word used in the book of Judges. For instance, in Judges 4.4, 4, we're told that Deborah was uh, judging or leading Israel at the time. So let's look at those, and then we'll have a question. Let the sea roar in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth with righteousness, he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. So... What's the concept of the word judge? What what uh, what is just beginning here? If you think it's of it as he is coming to judge the earth in the same way that Deborah was the judge of Israel, what are we seeing here? Does he sit there, you know, and and like we think of it as in a courtroom with a judge sitting there? Okay, is that what Deborah did? Is that what Solomon did, or um, Samuel did? What did they do as judges? What did Samson do? So they judged mm -hmm. Israel. They led Israel. They were the leaders. leaders. They were the leaders. Okay? I thought it was a they led the people. <laughs> I, I suppose if you were from the state of Missouri, you would better understand that because they don't have county commissioners that, that run a county like we do here, commissioners or... or uh, executive city city council they have they elect judges mm -hmm. and they oh. that's what they call that position a county commissioner is a county judge oh. Oh. and they lead the county so they they use the the term in that sense mm -hmm. yes what is that He's, and the people's with equity what does that mean equity means um to to be yeah. equal to equal treatment fair 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 treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Equitable. Mm -hmm. So is that why they're so excited? That's a good part of it, yeah. Fairness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Equal yeah. You know, they're included, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, so we really see the the, uh, the reign of Yeshua over the entire earth. It's just mm -hmm. beginning there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll go to verses uh, 6 through 9. There's two slides here, and that wraps up. The song. So we overlapped a little bit. Yeah. Well, actually, this is Revelation 19. Oh, Revelation, I'm nine. sorry. And yes. I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and a sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. One more. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Mm -hmm. So do we see that there is an events here that are connected with rejoicing? Consecutive events? Consecutive events are listed here. 
They go hand in hand. They go one right after the other. It starts with the marriage. Mm -hmm. The marriage of the lamb. The reign. The reign of God. God. Yeah. The reign oh. of God is connected with the marriage mm -hmm. and the marriage. marriage supper of the lamb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, it's we're rejoicing because the Lord omnipotent reigns, and then it says, her the bride has been made ready, mm -hmm. and it says, blessed are those who are called in the marriage supper of the lamb. So we've got the reign of God mm -hmm. with the marriage and with the marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. probably a good place to That's pick up. That's a good up. place to stop. Oh, yep. And we'll pick it up at Part K as we come back next week. Okay. We might actually start the Sabbath next right. week. We'll have to see how so that we'll, works. We'll at least finish up Tabernacles next week. And then may, perhaps start on uh, the next part, the last part. Oh, and I was just thinking, you know, we're going to rejoice when we celebrate that Feast of Tabernacles with Yeshua in Jerusalem. You know, there's a group of about 300 going to uh, Israel, Jerusalem for Sukkot, for the Feast of Tabernacles with Pastor Mark. Somehow I think that they're going to have an awful, wonderful time mm -hmm. celebrating together, you know, mm -hmm. 300 people strong. Um, and of course, they're not going to be the only believers there. That city is going to be uh, packed. So, it is one of the pilgrimage feasts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, yeah. so we can go ahead and close. Okay. And we'll okay, Father God, we just love you so much, and we just thank you for your feast. We just thank you that we can look forward to the Feast of Tabernacles, the time when you will truly dwell with man, the time when Yeshua comes and reigns on this earth as king from Jerusalem. It's a time of great joy. We just thank you, Father, for um, just for sending Yeshua to this earth as a light to the world, as our joy, as our salvation. Just be with each one of us to this week and um, <coughs> Just let your words sink deep into our hearts, especially as we begin the fall season tomorrow with the Feast of Trumpets. Mm -hmm. In Yeshua's name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming.